I'm gonna be completely honest. I do not know how the YouTube algorithm is gonna deal with this video because the title of this movie is Black Klansman spelt like this. In which case, these letters in sequence are part of the title in respect to the filmmaker, respect to Spike Lee. That's how he wants the title to be. I will have the title like that in this video. So the YouTube algorithm might bury the video, might demonetize it, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Black Klansman. So Black Klansman is the insane true story taking place in 1979. A black cop, Officer Ron Stallworth, played by John David Washington. Yes, that is Denzel Washington's son. And he's great in the movie. And sometimes when he talks, you're like, that is Denzel. He essentially answers an ad in the paper for the Ku Klux Klan. So he infiltrates the Ku Klux Klan. Which when I heard the premise, I was like, is it a comedy? Like Clayton Bigsby from Chappelle's show? It is not a comedy. It is a very heavy drama, but it does have comedy in it. And I appreciated that. But unless the Klan went completely blind in the seventies, he couldn't show up to meet them. Them, so he talks to them on the phone and Adam Driver's character, he goes and meets them. So both of them essentially play the same person. And for the most part, I really enjoyed this movie. Like I said, it's heavy. I mean, the content is very heavy. It's mostly heavy because you know for a fact this movie is a message to today, to modern day, to us. Because those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it and the hate circle, it's still there. You look online, on social media, on Twitter, whatever, and you just feel like we're going in a circle as we circle the drain down the toilet bowl. And while I have made videos in the past talking about how I don't feel every movie needs a political or social message in it. Sometimes a movie needs to be an escape. It, escapism's real. Black Klansman is not one of those movies you go to to escape. I mean, when I saw the trailer, I was like, that movie's going to have a message. It's gonna be very relevant to today. If you don't think that going into this movie, you're fooling yourself. In fact, it should be one of the reasons you go to this movie. So if you don't like that or don't want that, you have been warned. What the movie does very well is it does show sides. I mean, it's not like, oh, well, then the Klan, they're just doing their thing. Hate, but you know, perspective, it's not like that. But they do show show them all meeting and they do come across just like, oh, hi, Chuck, you want some burgers? Because you can't really pick out a bigot. You can't go to the mall and just be like, that's a racist, that's not a racist. It doesn't work like that. But also the Black Panthers are a part of this movie. And when Ron Stallworth is talking from someone from the Black Panthers, that is a very fascinating conversation because the conversation is, well, you're the enemy. And he's like, I'm a cop and I'm trying to do good. I'm trying to help you. So I really like that the movie illustrated sometimes people who are fighting for the same thing just see each other as the enemy. The movie does have a couple of Donald Trump references I know some people just, they, they knuckle up, they back up like, <gasps> when they hear that. But I felt like it was within character. David Duke in this movie played by Topher Grace, I thought he did a great job too. David Duke being the former leader of the Ku Klux Klan. But David Duke in real life has said he likes Trump. Like he's advocated for Trump. So when David Duke in this movie makes a reference about one day someone will be in office that makes America great again. I don't think David Duke said the words make America great again in 1979. Obviously David Duke likes Trump. So he must have had something in his mind at some time that Trump would then later say that would click with him. So it's just showing that connection. So it's within character. It's not like the purge marketing department trying to play up the make America great again thing where I'm like, that's a MAGA hat and the Trump administration is not going to make the purge happen. You're just overreaching purge movies. I do feel things got really real in the end credits, but I also feel like he really stuck that landing with the end credits or it was right before the end credits. It shows real footage of recent times and you're forced. It just gives you pause. You have to think about it. It was like Spike Lee was like, no, we're going to have this conversation because we've been having the conversation for a little over two hours now. Here's the cherry on top. I mean, you have to ask after that shit in Charlottesville, Virginia. Like, why couldn't the president just get up there and be like, all black people out there know this. We are not going back in time. Please do not be afraid of that. We are moving forward. We are a progressive nation. When I said I wanted to make America great again, what I meant was take it back to the booming economy. I did not mean I was going to isolate you. Please know that we will make America better than before with everybody as equals, including you. Fuck the Ku Klux Klan. Like, why couldn't he just say that? I don't get too political on here, but but why? Message aside, as a movie, narratively speaking, I thought the movie was actually, it was very engaging. It's not the most exciting thing ever, but when Adam Driver is there amidst this Ku Klux Klan rally, you're just like, don't get caught at all. I did appreciate the humor when it was in it, but like I said, this movie's not a comedy, it is a drama. The movie's so applicable to modern day, sometimes it just feels heavy. And with that heaviness, you need some, you need to laugh sometimes. The movie gives you a few chuckles now and then, I appreciated that. Because life has chuckles no matter what. Like there's nothing on earth, no, form of entertainment, no medium has so perfectly blended all genres as well as life itself has. So when a drama has comedy, it's just life. I do feel like the movie had some pacing issues sometimes. I mean, the movie's two hours, 20 minutes. Near the end, the last third of the movie, I was like, this is dragging on, you could pick it up. Whereas I feel like that should have been sped up. There are sometimes with the girlfriend who is a part of the Black Panthers. She's great when she's on screen, but I forget about her when she's not. And then the movie goes back to her after a long hiatus. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. She's a part of it. I felt like that was a little uneven. And there were some stylistic choices when the intent 
intense thing is happening when it is going down it's just, it's 70s music which it takes place in the 70s should make sense but when watching it it just doesn't i just imagined more intense music playing and i would have been on the edge of my seat it's not the only questionable stylistic choice in this movie when this black panther leader is talking and he's giving his speech and you're like this is a very engaging speech but it cuts to the audience listening to it but it's not the audience really it's certain heads in the audience that are like fading in and out. It was just a strange call. Guys, in the end, I really enjoyed Black Klansman. It's an insane tale that's a true story. Everyone did a great job in it. Adam Driver's fantastic. John David Washington, want to see more of him. The movie's not perfect, but it sticks to the landing of its message. It was engaging. It was thrilling at times, and I personally thought it was a great time. No alcohol required. There was actually a really great philosophical moment that lends itself to a debate in here. Because talking about this movie, Birth of a Nation, I've never seen it, but apparently it really empowered the Ku Klux Klan. So this movie changed the world, in which case you could argue art changed changes reality. But the phrase has always been, art imitates reality. So if reality is changed by art, but then art imitates reality, it's just very circular. It's like the source of the reflection becoming the reflection and just goes back and forth. That is another conversation for the people to have at their whim. All right, so Black Klansman, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.